Welcome to my presentation titled SCORM, Why and How to Use the Shareable Content Object Reference Model. I'd like to explain why and how you as an instructional designer should know about this. The first time I learned of SCORM was last summer. I needed to convert an online learning module to a client specification. I received an email containing this requirement. Our project needs to be compliant to SCORM version 1.2 for use in our LMS. None of this was familiar to me and uh, I did some basic research and discovered the importance of SCORM to instructional designers. So I learned that SCORM is a collection of standards and specifications for web-based e-learning. What does this mean? The aim of SCORM is to make content shareable among different departments in a corporation or federal agencies or academic institutions. So basically SCORM allows all the files in a learning management system to work together properly with the minimum of conversion and make sure all programmers comply to a set of standards during e-learning development. There are several versions of SCORM such as 1.1, 1.2, 2004 has first and second versions and so on. Uh, to be safe most of us use uh, the most common is SCORM 1.2. To review, a learning management system is used to provide, track, and manage online training and education. The LMS makes it convenient for asynchronous learning where students at any time can log into the system, take a desired or required course, get a score, and that score is recorded and tracked in the LMS. The most common are desired to learn, Blackboard Learn, Moodle, and Edmundo. So in the long run, SCORM saves time and money by making sure everyone follows the same standards. Here's a simple analogy. When you play a DVD movie in your home DVD player, you expect it to work without having to purchase more equipment or fooling with the settings on your DVD player. SCORM saves time and money by making uh, integration of content and getting your stuff to work with everyone else's. Now that you basically understand the importance of SCORM, I can discuss the most efficient way to produce SCORM compliant modules for your learning management system. The most common software used in instructional design is Adobe Captivate. There are other options available which I will discuss. Adobe Captivate is the easiest and most complete software to use to create a batch of SCORM compliant learning modules. The purchase price might be the only drawback as it costs $899 per user. There is a lease option which is attractive at $29 per month and that would be on a month-to-month -month basis or $19.99 a month for a one-year lease. Uh, there is no student pricing available on this software. Let's take a look at Adobe Captivate. The software is very user-friendly and the first thing you'll notice is that the user interface is very, very similar to PowerPoint, making the transition very appealing. The slides can be viewed on your left, just as PowerPoint does, and the stage area even has text blocks ready to click on to add your own text. Uh, to make things even easier, you can import existing PowerPoint presentations into Captivate to incorporate your lessons and then add more features like testing, reporting, exporting to HTML5, Flash, and SCORM. You can import individual PowerPoint slides with the extension PPT. Any of those files will work easily. If you want to import the newer PowerPoint files, such as the extension PPTX, you must have PowerPoint 2010 installed on your computer. To import a whole PowerPoint presentation, Go to File, Import, PowerPoint Slides, and you can create your own slides in Captivate or import existing slides. Once you have developed the content of your presentation, you are ready to publish or export your entire learning module to the SCORM compliant format. By doing this, you will create a group of files that your learning management system can use and understand. There are only two steps in Adobe Captivate, setting your preferences, and then exporting or publishing your final product. To set your preferences in Captivate, click on Edit Preferences 
or quiz quiz preferences. Either way will get you to the next window. Be sure you look on the left column and select reporting from the category. Then select enable reporting by clicking in the checkbox. Choose the SCORM version from the version drop down list that you wish to use. The version chosen should be consistent with the requirements of your LMS. The most common is SCORM 1.2. If you did not select enable reporting in the first step, chances are a lot of your options will be grayed out and you won't be able to select them. Now you will select settings from the categories on the left. Enter a name for your project such as my classroom presentation. This is the name that the LMS will use to identify everything. Enter a title into the title bar. This could be viewed by the students and can be the same name as you use, just put into your identifier. In the interaction ID prefix area, enter a name. No spaces are allowed in this field as it will generate file names that may be used in programming. We are now ready to publish to SCORM. Go to File, Publish. When the window opens, on the left column, select SWF HTML5 as the format. In the organ, in, <coughs> excuse me, in the output format options, select SWF or Flash. And if you're also using this for mobile devices, you can check the HTML5 checkbox. Select zip files if you are publishing for an LMS. This is the file that you will upload or send to the LMS. After you have finished this, simply click on the Publish button and all your files will be automatically produced for you. There is an option also to access through FTP, providing you have permission to do so from your server. Simply fill in the information for your server location, the directory that you are, are to put your files in, and any other information that is given to you from your IT department. Once you publish these, the files automatically will go to the server and you will be finished. Publishing your project produces one zip file, which contains all the files your LMS project needs to conform to SCORM standards. A lot of users ask if you could just simply use MS PowerPoint 2010 to create your SCORM compliant files. Now, there are a lot more steps to it, but it can be done. First, you must find the right tool to use to interpret your files, which you could find at elearningatlas.com. As of today, there were 37 different choices. Then you need to convert your PowerPoint presentation, uh, just as if we, uh, just by using something as simple as, as uh, Captivate. Then you need to test your SCORM package by signing up for an online program called SCORM Cloud. If it works in there, you'll get the OK from that particular application, and then you'll be able to deliver your SCORM package. To make things even easier, the welcome screen in Captivate offers the option to create a new project using an existing PowerPoint presentation. You can build on that presentation by adding anything Cap Captivate is capable of doing, such as testing and reporting. This concludes my presentation on how and why to use SCORM for your learning management system. Some of the options I have presented may be more accessible to you than the others. One last comment I'd like to make is Adobe does offer you a 30-day free trial of Captivate version 7.0. Again, you can save money on the software release program or by purchasing an earlier version of Captivate such as 5.0 or 6.0. Keep in mind you may be saving money but wasting time by selecting an, object, an option that isn't a good fit for you.